Hi, it's been such a long time since I've done a plot tour. Um, in fact, it was July and it's now December. So let's just go and have a walk around, I think. That's probably the best way to do it. It's gorgeous out there. Look at that sunshine, proper winter sun. It's really, really glary. I'll try and mitigate that for you. But uh, are you all right, Mum? Sorting the netting. Well, that's what I'm saying, but it's not. It's all in little bits. Oh. So I'm going to start with what's closest to me here. We've got two bundles of goldenrod to get in the ground, ASAP. And the mulberry tree looking magnificent against the blue sky. I've really got to get his base sorted. And I suppose first stop should be the greenhouse. It's a bit of a pigsty in here. Um, I really do need to chop these guys back. These have only just recently collapsed, actually. These were the orange aubergines. Um, I don't really expect them to survive the winter, but I haven't done anything with them. And these chilies are just going dormant. What temperature did it get to? Oh, mum's already reset it. But it's 16.8 in here now. This is the orange thyme that my sister sowed. Looking really healthy. Get that in the herb garden ASAP. These are all things which really do need to be thrown out. We've got two very happy coriander plants, not much use to anybody. This chili is so strangely hanging on. That's the jalapeno. Got some extra cress here, Iranian cress, and then just more chilies. So I'm gonna leave these a while and see what they do before I really clear them out. And this is a dahlia, which I've got to find space for in the ground somewhere. Around the back here, I really need to sort this area out. This is like the wood store, obviously, but like where we're storing loads of useful but junk stuff. And I've got to chop all of this area back. We've got the old leaf bin here. And yep, so this is all tucked behind the mulberry tree. And actually when this is in leaf, it's really difficult to get to, so it's not very practical. In the cold frame, we've got a couple more things that are waiting to go into the herb garden in spring. The sage and the rosemary, which were from cuttings, and another dahlia. Just hiding from the winter. First two brassica beds at this end, we've got the cavalanero and the green curly kale and pak choy. So this pak choy, we had some whoppers, but we've eaten them. So these are kind of the straggly last ones. And these guys... I accidentally grew dwarf kale, which is no good. We're not short of space. Uh, it wasn't intentional. Couple of straggling kohlrabi. We did this last year, actually. We had some that didn't look like it was going to do anything. We left them in and they had a, another burst of life in spring. So we'll do that again this year. Next bed up. These are my second lot of Asturian cabbage trees. And have a look at this. A beauty, a beauty of a Romanesco cauliflower. Some bits and pieces in here that got attacked by the chickens. So not much happening at that end. The asparagus bed is well and truly tucked away for winter. It's been cut back and mulched and weeded. We've got the garlic chives here are sort of throwing their seed around. I'm really hoping they're going to self seed a bit. I have saved some, but I want some more to come up through here. On this end, this is quite a big project. I've got these two gooseberries, there's a red one and a white one, and they're just absolutely lethal to pick anything from, and they're so messy. I'm gonna cut these right back, fan train them, and shunt them up into the fruit cage in the spring. The other end of this bed is just all rhubarb. We've got absolutely whopping great crowns of rhubarb. Somehow it's always got one leaf on it. Don't know why. This is the second asparagus bed that we planted last year. So that's got a couple more years before we can pick from it. And further up are my field beans, which is a green manure. I'll put links to information for green manure underneath in the notes, but these have come up really good. I was thinking that they were gonna be completely munched through by the mice and squirrels, but they haven't. They look fab. Saves having a bit of bare soil for the winter. 
And we've got a couple of charred plants up here. This is Ford Hook Giant, but this one was got by Delphi. And this one we managed to protect. So this one's still all right, but that chap's not looking so good. Um, parsley up that end. This is the fruit cage, right? Loads has to be done in here this year. So we moved this in the sp spring of this year. And instead of getting the fruit in immediately, it's kind of become a bit of a temporary brassica cage um, just to use up the space. So in here at the moment, we've got these calettes, which is a really late variety. So they'll be ready kind of end of Jan, Feb, March time. Behind them, we've got Brussels sprouts coming on okay. For an area that's really quite infested with club root, these things are doing really well. I'm quite impressed. And then we've got the lovely little top hearts to eat as well, which is super sweet. Got some turnips in the corner here. We've got the really late sowing of purple sprouting broccoli that's just starting up there. So that will be kind of Jan Feb as well. We've also got white sprouting here. Just sort of starting to do something in the middle there. And then this was the first lot of the Asturian cabbage trees that I grew. Look at that colour. With the winter sun on them, they are just glowing. They're so beautiful. Absolutely love them. So we've also got strawberries planted at the front here in front of these raspberry canes. And in the far corner is my grapevine, which I'm training to go all the way along this top wall here. So it would just be like a double stripe. The strawberries are going to be moved. I've currently got this plasticky netting over them and I'm going to move all the strawberries into this corner here and get a much more substantial cover for them. In fact, I'm going to build something that's almost exactly like this carrot root fly cage, but do it with chicken wire rather than Enviromesh so that the pollinators can get through. So that's what's happening in there. Quite big changes happening in there this coming spring. At the top end, we've got quite a lot of fruit trees. We've got this fig tree, which despite the really, really crappy late summer we had, uh, we got loads of figs from, loads and loads. So that was quite pleasing. I've got to do a bit of work on this tree this year because it's getting a bit crowded in the centre. So I'll give that a prune. And then my pride and joy, the apricot tree. That's gorgeous. I'm really hoping for a gentle February for the blossom for that. Berta's keeping guard, as always. So going down the centre stretch of the plot, we kind of, it starts with this bay tree up here. And then we have savoury in the corner of this first bread, which I've given a massive chop back to. And then we've got radicchio over here. Look at the colour of these guys. Are they not spectacular? I think they're absolutely gorgeous. And they look amazing with the frizzly behind them, really bright. So we've got a load of lettuces in here, various bits and pieces. There's a freckles here. Up at the compost bins, everything's going quite well along here. This is the new leaf mould bin coming on nicely mostly oak leaves from our oak tree at the other end but that's coming on very nicely I've got two more of those bins to build actually that I need to do these are two new fruit trees this year this one is a conference pear it's looking really healthy and some more frizzly lettuce and just behind them we've got the fennel a couple of them really starting to heart up now which is nice can't wait for them and just behind them in the carrot root fly box, you can see the last of the carrots peeking through. This bed is absolutely riddled with club root and we decided to put it over to dahlias and spring bulbs this year. And this is the cherry tree. So it is a sweet cherry, hoping to get some fruit off it this coming year. So behind here is where I had the wildflowers and the toad flax last year. We've just let it to go to seed so that anybody who wants to eat it can. Um, and just let it go wild. I'll clear that up before I re-sow in the spring. We've got a gunnera here that's been got by the frost, but he'll recover just fine. This area is really kind of set aside for wildlife. We've got newts and huge number of dragonflies. Opposite that is a bit more green manure. These are the field beans again. I've gone a bit OTT on the field beans this year. And it used to be an onion bed, and I obviously haven't cleared it very well. Opposite them, we've got celeriac and celery. So the main difference, you can see, they look really similar in the leaf. 
they look almost identical but this one is the celery you can see there's no root ball and then the celeriac is forming these kind of beautiful clumps underneath really enjoyed growing celery this year it's the first year i've done it and it's been really successful been just harvesting it as we go got some more beetroot in this bed this is kind of the the straggly last few of this sowing which was an early sowing there's a couple more dotted around in there some decent sized ones and next to them are these whopping looking parsnips haven't dug any up yet so they could be you know all head and no legs but we will see Next to them, we've got a bit of perpetual spinach in here, which is coming along quite nicely. It's surviving. The only thing we need to do with that is cover it from the birds because the pigeons love it too. And in here, this is Americana spinach, which is really good in salads. It's like a really fleshy spinach. It's a bit eaten, but still yum. What else have we got? This is the other side of the pond, which is going to be more wildflowers this year which is going to kind of be either side of our junk slash netting shed. So the savoury that I chopped back is in here drying, which uh, God, it smells so strong. It smells wonderful. But yeah, basically just junk in here. I need to give that a big old sort out. And this, if you've been watching the vlogs, you will see that I cut all of this out fairly recently. So it's given us loads more space along here in front of this Cox's orange pippin. Yeah, just masses of space. And this is gonna be filled with flowers and then slightly further up in front of the polytunnel will be herbs. Okay, I'm so pleased with what's going on in here. This is the first year we've tried to grow anything in here for the winter. This is our first winter season, I mean. So we've got some more radicchio, we've got chard, we've got some more of that Americana spinach. Down to 4.6. Gets so much colder in here than the greenhouse, actually. But things are looking fine. I'm really pleased. So this is the rainbow chard. We do have a bit of a problem with humidity in here. You can see we've got a bit of mould and also we've lost a couple of these uh, Lollarossa lettuces. They've just rotted off. But this is our first year and we're kind of learning what we can and can't grow in this space. And I think it's going to be very much for more robust veg. So the chard is doing fantastically this Americana spinach is looking set to give us a really good crop in the early spring. It's looking really lovely. And then next to that, we've got the pat choy, which I planted out what, two weeks ago. They're starting to come good. Again, on this side, more chard looking really, really healthy. So I think we know chard's a winner in here. Talking of chard, we've got more chard and beetroot outside. This lot got really attacked by the birds before we had it covered, so it's a bit behind itself. And this is the garlic and shallots. These sort of long, slim, elegant chaps are the garlic, and these guys are the shallots. I'm super excited about them. Every single one of them's come up as well, which is a bit of a bonus. End of the bed, parsley. This is Lisette, a curly leaf chappy. It's been really successful for us this year. More parsley than you can shake a stick at. Then the makeshift poly that we've just got over one bed, loads of stuff in here, chicory, beetroot, turnips, more chard. It's not just me who eats the chard, by the way, the chickens really like it too, so I'm not just a chard maniac. We've got a uh, simidi wrapper in this bed, which is kind of a flowering mustard sprout, absolutely delicious. I sewed this really thickly, as you can see, um, because the first lot the chickens got in and I thought they'd eaten all the seed. Sewed again, obviously a bit thick. And then the broad beans. If you remember, these are the really tall ones that I thought weren't gonna survive. They look so lush and so healthy. I'm well impressed with them. And we've had quite a battering of weather too. Impressed with them. Far end here, bit of sorrel. 
mainly for the chickens because they absolutely love it. But we do put it in salads in the spring. And then we're back down the end, guys. That's about where we are. Talking of the girls, they are busily locked up inside because of the avian flu lockdown. So poor loves. The, ro the lavender that I planted out the front of them has survived. It's looking good. Hopefully in the spring that will really take off. Hey Delph, it's a miserable existence being locked in, isn't it, girly whirly? A miserable existence. Oh, love, soon. Soon. There's also this blackcurrant, which I'm going to be planting in the fruit cage as soon as we move the brassicas out. So yeah, quite a lot to get done in the next couple of months. But so much has changed this year. It's uh, incredible. We've we've got quite a lot done. That sunshine, yeah, it's glorious. Well, that's where we stand at the very end of 2020. What a year it's been. Come on 2021 is all I can say. Although to be fair, it doesn't look like it's gonna be much different, particularly the beginning, making completely unfounded predictions. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that is the garden, December 2020. If this is the first time you've watched anything on Plot 37, I do a weekly vlog, which comes out every Tuesday afternoon, uh, which will give you what we're doing on a more weekly basis. Uh, I'm also over on Instagram as plot underscore 37, surprising name. Right, next year I'm going to try and get a plot tour out every month because when I was looking back over the June one, or was it July? July one last year, it was so nice to be able to just have a walk around and see what everything was doing. And there's a bit of a gap between July and December. So hopefully next year I'm going to be on it every single month. Anyway, if you enjoyed it, give me the thumbs up and hit subscribe if you're interested in seeing what we're doing a bit more often than uh, a bit more often. Uh, and maybe see you over on Instagram. I'm going to go outside and enjoy the sunshine for a bit now, I think. Mm.